Alright, so we've got the displays mounted to right at the front panels. And now what we're going to do is just do a, a sentry check to make sure that the actual module is working, the tacker module itself, or at least switches on on at this stage. So what we have here um, is the display, and I've just got a nine volt battery. So that part of the module is actually working. The next part that we'll check a bit later on is um, the actual sensor line and make sure it's recording the count. Right, the next part that we're going to do is start to wire right the two tacos up. So what we're going to do here is just find the centre of one side of the boxes. I'm just going to do this from corner to corner. And just put a um, pencil mark in there so we've got our points. We'll do that on both boxes. That will give us our centre point on that side of the box and that's the side we'll be running our external wires from and into the box. Alright, we're just going to put the holes into both the um, ends of the boxes. sets of wires that go in. The first one I'm putting in here is for the my pickup, magnetic pickup. Now the power supply that we're going to be using for this one is a 12 volt 1 amp and we're going to plug that in. Now the thing we've got to check for here is the, right, the polarity of the wires that we're going to be using. Now not all are marked accordingly as you can see here. So we're reading negative 18 volts so we're going to swap these around what we're looking for is just to identify the positive wire so negative 18 volts and this wire here is our positive wire so what we're going to do here is just um, tin all the wires that we need to solder together so we'll be doing that on the display and also the um, right power lead and the sensor leads so I won't show all of them but um, the process is quite simple Got to put a, a little bit of um, solder on the wires so they're ready for soldering. All right, so we've tinned up right our connecting wires as far as the display goes, and we've sorted out the polarity and now um, soldered the appropriate wires together. So on this particular um, right display. Um, you got the positive wire goes to brown, uh, the negative wire goes to blue, which is on the sensor line, and then you've got a black wire hanging out here, and that actually goes to the sensor connection on the display. So what we're going to do now is just put some heat shrink on to these ones here. So we're putting red heat shrink on for the right of the positive. The negative is the middle one, so we're going to put a black heat shrink on there and to identify the sense line um, we're going to use a green heat, heat shrink to identify the sense line so that now allows us to solder onto the right power supply and sensor cables and be able to heat shrink those down all right so we've connected the right display lines to the power and sensor lines so what we're doing now is just bringing the heat shrinks up and we're going to put them in position, get ready for heating those down. And lucky last is the sense wire. 
All right, so I'm just going to um, do the heat shrinks and get them all put in position. So I've got the cable tie in position and what it basically does is just acts as a stop so you, you can't rip all this through right the hole that the cable is feeding out through the side. Alright so we're just going to close up the system now and we can do that. We've got our cable stop in there, just got to feed the wires into the box so they're laid nice and flat and feed, put our screws in. So a screwdriver and when you're doing these plastic boxes you just slowly feed the screw down until it stops you don't have to go any tighter than that otherwise you'll end up stripping the thread or damaging the, right, the screw itself Alright, so just to reiterate again, um, we did try a couple of power packs on these because we weren't sure what the draw current was, you know, on these particular units. But we found that um, they draw about 200 milliamps, and the power packs that we were using originally were um, a 9 volt uh, 200 milliamp power pack, and that was not allowing it to work properly. So what we went up to was a 12 volt 1 amp is what we're using but I think you get away with 500 milliamps which I've used on these before and that works quite fine. What we'll do is we'll plug it in and make sure she's she's operating all right and the other thing that we should be able to do is just get an idea if it's working. Now you've got to be careful with the magnet and the sensor because the magnet only works on one side to the sensor itself and as you can see there it's working quite fine. Alright so what we have here is the, the smaller lathe and what we're actually making one of these for is for the la um, our larger lathe but on the chuck of the lathe right, we have um, a magnet fixed to the chuck and we have a sensor at the back so yeah. we already have that set up on this small one so what we're going to do is compare the one that we just built to the one that we've already had operating for a while. So if we turn the lathe on, hold the sensor, see they're pretty much on par.